Hello, still in Portugal. Um, I hear from a lot of people um, who tell me, well, it's easy to do FIRE, financial independence, retire early. It's easy to do that if you're a software developer or if you have a really high paid job. But I only earn $20,000 a year or $30,000 a year. I have a family. There's no way I could do FIRE. That's for other people. And what I say, that there's a few responses to this. Firstly, whatever your circumstances, what are the chances that you are paid exactly the amount of money you need to live? Because you can be sure someone else who lives in your city, almost certainly, in a very similar situation, lives on 10% less than you do. And you might both spend all your money, but what are the, what are the chances you're paid exactly the amount of money you need to live? Zero, that's, that's not the case. So it's not, fire isn't, isn't about being rich and saving a lot of that money, although if you earn a lot, it, it can be easier to get to fire, unless of course you want to have a, a, a big lifestyle when you spend a lot of money, which isn't necessary for most people to be happy, I think. But if you want to be flying private or flying first class, if you want to be staying in luxury hotels around the world for the rest of your life, you're going to need, you're going to have a much bigger fire number, it could be 10 million rather than 1 million or 50 million even. You're going to have a much bigger fire number than someone who's content to live in a small apartment in a cheap city in the world and have a, a simple life. Both of you may be happy, I'm not, I'm not saying what you should do, but to think fire is just for rich people, I think misunderstands the point. We can all firstly cut our costs, live on 10% less and save that instead. Uh, and we can all try to earn more money. Like whatever your job is, there are always ways to earn more money. You could get a different job. You can get a higher paid job. You could try and get a promotion at work. You could start your own business. You could start podcasting on the side. You could start a YouTube channel on the side. There are always options. There's always things you can do to live on less, be happy on less. It doesn't necessarily mean there has to be a big sacrifice, but also to increase your earnings. Uh, some great ways that you can um, decrease your costs is look at your biggest regular costs. So I live in um, a three, I, I pay three, no, 400 US dollars a month in a shared flat in Prague. I, I really enjoy it. it. It's a very small room, um, but it's right in the center of town. And I'm, I'm very happy there. Um, now, if you can reduce your costs, if you can move to an, a, an apartment or a house that's 10% cheaper, 20% cheaper, 30% cheaper, that could be enough to reach fire within 10 years. It's these regular costs that soon add up. If you could get rid of your BMW car payment, if you, could inv if you invested that money in crypto 10 years ago, and this isn't financial advice, if you got a cheap used Toyota, this is a very common fire thing, and Mr. Money Mustache did this. If you got a cheap used Toyota, say, reliable, cheap car, and got rid of your car payment and put that money into crypto, you'd probably already be a millionaire. Now, I'm not saying that's definitely how it's gonna play out in the future, but you get the idea. These, these regular payments are the things that really, if you can get rid of them, help. Now, I, I personally don't own a car. I've never owned a car. I have no interest in owning a car. I've lived in places, generally big cities, where you don't need a car. In fact, a car to me, if I was given a car completely for free, I wouldn't take it, because it's just a hindrance. I have no idea what I'd use it for. If I really needed a car for some road trip or something, I'd just hire one. I live in the middle of Prague. Previously, I've lived in the middle of London. I've lived in um, Saigon, in Vietnam. I've traveled a lot. I've, I've never needed a car. It's of no interest to me. So it's, it's, you, now, not everyone's in that position. Some people really do need a car. But how much joy are you getting from an expensive car versus the amount of joy you'll be getting knowing that you're cancel proof, knowing that you have a savings system in place, knowing that the money you're saving on that car, whether it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 500 bucks a month, whatever your car payment is, the money you're saving on that, every hour of every day, that money is going towards your freedom. That expensive car is you selling your freedom, selling years of your freedom in order to have an, an, a nicer leather seat, well, in order that somebody thinks you're cool. No one thinks you're cool because you have an expensive car. No, nobody cares. 
in order that you what, have nicer electric windows or a slightly faster car that you just sit in traffic all day with anyway? Like, this is all nonsense. Your freedom is what matters the most. That's where you'll get most enjoyment, knowing that when you wake up in the morning, you can do anything you want. That's something I've done pretty much for 20 years. I mean, I am lucky that I enjoy my job and I don't need to get to fire because I want to stop a job I hate. I, I really enjoy my job. But fire can be for everyone. It's not just for the rich. If, if you are rich and you're also happy to live on very little, you can get to fire extremely quickly. If you're earning 100, 200, 300 thousand dollars a year or more, especially if you're in a couple and you're willing to stay in a very cheap apartment and lower your costs, then you, you could get to fire in a few months even, or just a couple of years. But even if you're on a relatively low wage, if you could just save two thousand dollars a year, invest that, save it, over five years, 10 years, 20 years, that, that will add up. I mean, there are famous cases of uh, cleaning maids and janitors who just simply invested in index funds, saved money, it's something anyone can do, it's not complicated, saved money. Uh, one quite well-known janitor in the US died with $8 million in the bank. Now, maybe he should have done something with that when he's alive, and he, I think he did leave most, if not all of it, to charity. But um, it can be done, it doesn't need a lot of money. Compounding is the key. Investing money well and compounding. It used to be that you could have a savings account and compound in that, they don't really exist anymore. The last savings account I had had 0.4% interest. So you're actually gonna be losing money to inflation on that. Index funds have traditionally been very good, returning up to 7% a year, but that may still be the case. I'm not recommending against index funds, not financial advice. Crypto seems to be a very good area to invest in now, but it doesn't really matter what the best places to put the money are at any given time. Anybody can do this. If you just take a few hours or a few days of your time to figure out how to get your costs down, how to earn more money, and how to invest the money that you don't spend, this can revolutionize your life. And a simple way to begin would be to read uh, some books on the subject. This is how I got into finance myself. Um, I think the first book I read on this subject was The Richest Man in Babylon. This is, uh, I'm not actually sure if it's completely a true story. It's kind of comes across as a true story. Making the point that even thousands of years ago, people had all the same problems they have now. They had money problems. There were money lenders. There were banks. People were living paycheck to paycheck thousands of years ago in ancient Babylonia. They had all the same problems. And the rich people then had all the same answers. And this book um, has five laws of wealth. I think I, I may do an episode just on this book in the future. Um, but the, the, the premise of the book really is that the richest man in Babylon there didn't win the lottery, didn't make money gambling. Uh, all he did was save 10% of his income. That's it. He just saved 10% of his income. Once you can compound 10% saved, and now of course if you save more that's better, but once you can compound money you save, even if you're poor, after many years, you're gonna have a significant amount of wealth. And once you can start investing that and investing in yourself, whether it's with new skills or investments that make you an income, such as property, or maybe Bitcoin now, or whatever it is, index funds, once you can take the money you've saved and get that money earning more money for you, then you're on the road to financial freedom. Anybody can do this. People are very, um, limited means have done this before. So you can do it, whatever your situation is. There's so many options in terms of how you can do this. Um, but being able to be a bit stoic, being able to live simply is definitely a bonus, but it's not necessarily a requirement. It all depends on what's right for you. So don't think that fire isn't for you because fire could be for everyone. In fact, I think fire should be for everyone. This should be everyone's aim. Um, because once you have financial freedom, uh, it makes every other aspect of your life better. You don't just have two weeks of holiday a year anymore. 
you can travel and do whatever you want, wherever you want. It's not necessarily about retirement, financial independence, retire early. I think the retirement just means you don't have to work. But if you get bored, you could spend a year setting up a company that won't even necessarily make you a lot of money, but you might meet some interesting people through that company. You might be able to do work you love. You might be giving back to society. So it's, once you have financial freedom, every other aspect of your life improves. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, it's, let me know if, if, if you think financial freedom is for you. If you don't think it's for you, let me know why. If you think it is for you and you've managed to achieve it or you're on the path, let me know why in the comments as well. And I'll see you guys on the road.